Chapter 1. A Mysterious Invitation. Emily's Saturday started like any other. She woke up, yawned, and made her way to the kitchen for breakfast. But when she saw a shiny envelope with her name written in a fancy script on the dining table, her heart raced. Em, look what came for you. Her mum called out, sounding excited. Emily picked up the envelope and carefully opened it. Inside was a letter on rich, smooth paper. Congratulations. You have been accepted to Star of Tomorrow Academy. She read aloud, her voice filled with surprise. Her mum clapped her hands joyfully. This is that special school you told me about, isn't it? Emily nodded, still in shock. She had heard stories about the academy from her friends. It wasn't just any school. It was the school. Tales of its big library, cool science labs, and even a rooftop garden had been shared in whispers at her old school. The next few days were a blur of excitement. Emily and her mum went shopping for her new school uniform. A navy blazer with the academy's golden emblem, a white shirt, and a dark green skirt. They also bought new school supplies. Emily was especially pleased with a brand new notebook, which she planned to use as a diary. When the day finally came to leave for the academy, Emily felt a mix of excitement and nervousness. She waved goodbye to her little street her friends, and her old life, promising to write to them often. The academy's entrance was impressive. Two big, golden gates slowly opened to reveal a path lined with old trees, their leaves rustling in the wind. At the end of this path stood the academy, a tall, majestic building made of red bricks and surrounded by green lawns. Emily was led to her new dormitory, a large, cozy room with wooden floors and soft lighting. She noticed a nameplate on one of the beds. Sarah, before she could wonder about her new roommate, a cheerful voice greeted her. Hi there, I'm Sarah, said a girl with a bright smile and soft blue eyes, extending a hand. Hello, I'm Emily, she replied, shaking Sarah's hand. Sarah helped Emily unpack and settle in. They talked about their homes favorite foods, and hobbies. Emily found out that Sarah loved books just as much as she did. By the end of the evening, the two felt like old friends. As Emily climbed into bed that night, she wrote in her new diary, first day at Star of Tomorrow Academy, feeling happy and hopeful, good night. And with that, she drifted into a peaceful sleep, dreaming of the adventures that awaited her. Chapter 2 Traces of Superpowers The Academy's life began in a whirlwind of classes, new friendships, and exploring hidden corners. Every day, Emily would wake up to the soft chirping of birds outside her window, the sky painted in warm hues of sunrise. Each morning, the two friends, Emily and Sarah, would walk to their classes together. They'd pass by the beautiful gardens, where students often relaxed, reading or chatting. The library became their favorite spot. It was vast, with tall wooden shelves filled with books of all kinds, from old classics to modern tales. One afternoon, while Emily was engrossed in a book about ancient legends, she noticed something odd. A book titled The Power Within floated gently from a high shelf and settled into the hands of a boy named Jack. He caught her gaze and winked, resuming his reading as if nothing unusual had happened. Did you see that? Emily whispered to Sarah. Sarah replied with a mysterious smile. There are many things at this academy that aren't what they seem. Days later, Emily experienced another strange event. In the middle of a sunny day, as students played on the field, she saw a girl named Lucy stand still, raise her hands, and suddenly, the sky was filled with clouds. Moments later, it began to drizzle, and Lucy danced joyfully under the raindrops. Emily was amazed. This school is full of surprises. She told Sarah that evening as they lay in their beds. Sarah chuckled. Oh, you've seen nothing yet. That night, Emily had trouble sleeping. She kept replaying the events in her mind. And then, just when she was about to fall asleep, she saw Sarah floating above her bed, surrounded by a soft, 
silvery glow. Emily blinked in disbelief, thinking she was dreaming, but then, Sarah gently descended, ticking herself back under the covers. Emily's heart raced. Was her new friend also gifted with special power? The next day, over breakfast, Emily decided to ask. Sarah, she began hesitantly. Last night, were you floating? Sarah blushed slightly, then grinned. Ah, so you saw? Yes, I sometimes float when I dream. It's something I've done since I was a child. Emily's eyes widened. This school is truly special, she thought. Both girls laughed, their bond growing stronger. They promised to look out for each other and explore the academy's mysteries together. As days turned into weeks, Emily started to feel that she wasn't just at an academy. She was in a world where the impossible became possible, and every day held a new surprise. Chapter 3 The Academy's Secret Weeks passed, and the academy felt more like home to Emily. The grand halls echoed with laughter, and corridors whispered secrets. Yet, amidst the daily routines and fun, the hints of something more mysterious never faded. One rainy afternoon, Emily and Sarah found themselves in the back corner of the library. Emily, her curiosity piqued by the strange events, had become more observant. She noticed an old wooden door, slightly ajar, hidden behind a thick red curtain. Have you ever seen this before? Emily whispered to Sarah, pointing to the door. Sarah shook her head, her blue eyes wide with curiosity. Let's see where it leads. Pushing the door open, they found themselves in a dimly lit, narrow corridor. The walls were lined with old paintings of past academy directors, their eyes seeming to follow the girls. At the end of the hallway stood another door, heavier and adorned with strange symbols. Upon entering, the two discovered a vast underground chamber. The room was filled with bookshelves, much like the library above, but these books were older, covered in dust, with titles written in languages they couldn't recognize. Tables were cluttered with peculiar devices that blinked and buzzed, and large screens displayed maps of the world with glowing dots. Emily approached one table that had a thick leather-bound book. The title read, The Legacy of Powers. Flipping it open, she found detailed accounts of people from history who had special abilities. There were sketches of men and women levitating objects, controlling the elements, or even healing with a touch. Sarah, meanwhile, was examining a holographic screen. It showed profiles of students, their photos, names, and descriptions of their unique talents. To Emily's surprise, there was Sarah's photo, under which was written, Levitation during REM sleep. What is this place? Emily whispered, a chill running down her spine. Sarah looked thoughtful. I think we've stumbled upon the Academy's secret research room. They've been studying superpowers for generations. The girls realized that the Academy was not merely a place of learning, but also a hub for understanding and perhaps harnessing these unique powers. But why? What was the ultimate goal? They decided to keep their discovery a secret for now and began visiting the chamber regularly, seeking answers. With every visit, they uncovered more about the Academy's past, its founders, and the special students who had walked its halls. Yet, many questions remained. Why were they all gathered here, and who was truly in control? Little did Emily and Sarah know, their quest for answers was just beginning and the Academy held even deeper mysteries waiting to be unraveled. Chapter 4. A Clash of Powers The following weeks at the Academy were filled with hushed conversations and shared glances between Emily and Sarah. The two girls spent their free time poring over the information they had unearthed, slowly piecing together the puzzle. As the term progressed, their usual lessons took on a different tone. Emily noticed that some classes had an unusual focus on meditation, concentration, and understanding one's inner self. Some students, especially those with pronounced abilities, were often pulled out for special sessions with the school's top staff. One afternoon, 
While Emily was practicing her drying in the art room, Jack approached her. The same boy who could effortlessly pull books towards him with just a thought. He looked serious. Emily, we need to talk, he began. I've seen you and Sarah visiting the underground room. You're not the only ones who know about the Academy's secret. Surprised, Emily replied. What do you mean? Jack took a deep breath. There's a group of us, students with special talents. We've been trying to understand the Academy's real intentions, and we believe there's something big planned. Emily remembered the detailed profiles she and Sarah had seen in the hidden chamber. Do you think they're training us for something? Jack nodded. But we're not sure what. We need to unite and find out. The following days saw Emily, Sarah, and Jack gathering a team of gifted students. Lucy, who could summon rain, became their strategist. Tom, a boy who could create illusions, was the group's eyes and ears, often disguising himself to gather information. Their meetings were held in secret usually in the early hours of the morning when the academy was deep in sleep. The group trained diligently, honing their skills and preparing for any challenges they might face. However, it wasn't long before their activities drew attention. One morning, a summons arrived for Emily and her friends. The academy's director, Mr. Henderson, wanted to see them. The director's office was grand, with door windows and walls adorned with paintings. Mr. Henderson, a tall man with sharp features and piercing eyes, sat behind a mahogany desk. I'm aware of your little group, he began, his voice gold. You think you've discovered the Academy's purpose, but you've only scratched the surface. He continued, the world outside is changing. With the talents you all possess, you could be leaders guiding it to a brighter future. Emily felt a chill. His words sounded tempting, but there was a hidden agenda in his eyes. We won't be used for your plans, Jack retorted, his voice firm. Mr. Henderson smirked. You have no choice. Leaving the office, the group felt a mix of anger and determination. It was clear that a confrontation was inevitable. They needed to rally their friends, reveal the Academy's secrets, and decide their futures. The stage was set for a clash of powers unlike any the Academy had ever seen. Chapter 5. Unity in Diversity The atmosphere at the Academy became charged with tension. Whispers echoed through the hallways, and groups of students gathered in hushed conversations, sensing the storm that was brewing. Emily, Sarah, Jack, Lucy and Tom worked tirelessly, rallying supporters and devising a plan. One evening, Emily received a tip from Tom. There's going to be a gathering tomorrow night in the main hall, he shared. Mr. Henderson plans to unveil something big, and I believe it's related to harnessing our abilities. We need to be prepared, said Sarah, her voice determined. The next day, Emily and her group readied themselves. Jack had managed to get his hands on some gadgets from the secret room, which could disrupt the Academy's surveillance. Lucy prayed for rain, wanting nature on their side. Sarah practiced her floating, aiming to use it as a distraction if needed. Nightfall arrived, and students began filling the main hall. Mr. Henderson took the stage, his face displaying a confident smirk. Behind him was a large machine, covered in a white cloth. Tonight, he began, marks the beginning of a new era. With the combined might of your abilities and our technology, we shall forge a future where our academy rules supreme. As he pulled away the cloth, revealing a complex device with numerous dials and lights, gasps filled the room. It was clear that the machine was designed to amplify and control their powers. Suddenly, the hall's lights flickered. Rain began to pour outside, its sound thunderous against the windows. Jack used the momentary distraction to activate his gadget, sending the surveillance cameras into a frenzy. Sarah started to float, her silhouette illuminated by the lightning outside, drawing the attention of the crowd. Emily, with newfound courage, took the stage. This is our academy, she declared. We won't be controlled or used. 
Our powers are a part of us, not tools for someone's ambition. The students erupted in cheers, rallying behind her. Mr. Henderson, realizing he was outnumbered, retreated, his face red with anger. The confrontation had been averted, but Emily and her friends knew there was much work ahead. They decided to form a council, ensuring that students had a say in the academy's decisions. The secret chamber was open to all, transforming into a place of learning and understanding. Life returned to normal, but with a newfound sense of unity and purpose. Students of different backgrounds and abilities came together, helping each other grow and harness their gifts. As Emily wrote in her diary, reflecting on the events, she penned down a thought. True power doesn't come from control, but from understanding and unity. Our differences make us special, but our unity makes us strong. The Academy, with its secrets unveiled, now stood as a beacon of hope, a place where young talents could flourish, guided not by ambition but by love, respect, and understanding. Thank you for watching. To stay up to date on our future videos, please subscribe and hit the notification bell and let us know what you think in the comments below.